I'm from Tunisia, North Africa. Oh, cool. Nice. But right now I'm in Switzerland. So uh, myself, originally from uh, Frankfurt, Germany. Pleasure. I'm from Vietnam originally. <laughs> 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 we, we all move around, I guess. Um, yeah. Awesome. So thank you guys for joining. This is a very um, impromptu uh, idea fest um, for people who couldn't join the African Town Hall Idea Fest. And we have myself, James, um, Abdel, Karim, and Nebiu here with us. Um, you guys are proposals in Fun8, right? Uh, no, I don't uh, have. I mean, uh, yeah, me neither. Uh, and Fund8, I have. Uh, there's similar. There is a funds which I requested, but today I was hoping to attend the African Tunnel to present on my on updates on what we are doing on Fund Seven. Oh, on, cool! On our Fund Seven uh, proposal. Awesome. Yeah. Nebi, you want to go ahead and, and share your screen? Let me see. Uh, sure. I had uh, I had sent them uh, slides to share, but uh, I guess I can just uh, yeah, just share. Uh, uh, I'm just gonna. Sh so I'll just. I couldn't. I cannot share the slides right now. But I can. Okay. Uh, uh, I can just tell you about the project what we were working on. And, yeah. Uh, sure. So what I. Yeah. So what we were working on was a, a messenger wallet. So with this, uh, it was gonna be the first phase was going to be built on Telegram. So a Cardano wallet entirely within the Telegram uh, application itself. Uh, so the point of this was like to, uh, for all newcomers to remove that ambiguity of the confusion of, you know, creating wallet and the, that whole process, but like uh, a very secure wallet within the Telegram app though. So they don't have to download any other application. They can send directly the, uh, they can send directly the, the, they can use directly the wallet within the Telegram itself. They can send transactions directly from Telegram. Uh, or any messenger wallet actually we we plan on integrating more uh, because everybody here in Africa that was the pro proposal has at least has access to telegram or a lot of people have access to telegram and they use uh, their mobile phones daily uh, so we want to make it very easy at the same time there is also not any means for at least in my community within Ethiopia for anybody to uh, buy cryptocurrencies in general or specifically Cardano there's it's very complicated to buy the process because there is no direct buying methods available mm -hmm. for us. Uh, we have to do peer-to-peer -to -peer -to -peer only. That's the only option that we have. So with this Telegram, it's also a way of integrating the a payment option so that they can directly buy or sell their cryptocurrencies uh, uh, within the community. If I can share my screen, I think I can share the... Yeah, you can. It's our... a present now at the bottom. By the way, Yash, Afia... Nathaniel, thank you so much for joining. Glad we can make it. Okay. Okay. Uh, can you see my screen now? Yeah, I see the Telegram TM testing bot, right? Yes, yes. So this is the idea. I mean, uh, we've already built it. Uh, we've, uh, we are running it on the test net right now. Uh, so the first option is... Uh, when you open the bot, when you just start the bot automatically, you can, if you want, you can go test it yourself. So it's live on running on my server right now. Uh, you can uh, either create new wallets or restore wallets. So this is not, it's a non-custodial wallet, where it means we don't have the Cardano, the ADA with us. It's kept within the blockchain. So we figured that would be safer for everybody and uh, more trusting. So you can either create a new wallet or, or restore the wallet that you already have into the Telegram. So I've already created an account and you can see, I can check my balance, for example, this is all running on the test net. Uh, so total balance will be blurred, but like you can uh, click it and you can see the balance I have, or you can uh, say receive uh, Cardano or receive ADA, and then you can either see your receiving address or you can get a QR code uh, which you can, uh, which a person can scan and send to you. 
uh, which is uh, it's running on a different API, so that part is slow. Uh, the other uh, feature is to send a card, uh, to send a ADA. You can send to a, this is a feature which I like, which took us a little bit to, a little bit work to add, but you can send to a Cardano address where you just input the Cardano address, or you can directly send to a Telegram user. It's their users of the bot. If they use the bot, then you just send to the contact address. It will recognize their address, and they will send to their correct address. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, beside that, the feature we are adding right now is to buy or to exchange your uh, crypto. But for that, we need uh, API access from our local banks. And we are applying, and we're in the process of application because you have to be a registered business in order to get the API access. We've already applied for it, and uh, we're waiting for uh, for their access or for their permission. And uh, one other feature the bot would have is uh, similar to sending. I can, for example, uh, send. Uh, uh, let's say this person. <laughs> So I can directly uh, tag my bot. I can say send uh, send payment link, and then I could request this person to send to me directly. So when the person clicks send, it would automatically prepare the amount he wants to send. You know, it's directly sending it to myself actually right now. But it would it will all be conducted in the blockchain, and I will have uh, the the person that can send the uh, Ada, the biggest problem that we faced while developing this was the security, because this is entirely within the bot, within the Telegram. There is a lot of features that are that I would be staying within the bot itself. For example, in this in this aspect, where I have to put in my password, uh, it's pretty much I have to put in my password here, and it's expected to just be clearly visible, which is which is not the right way to do it. So that is the part we're working on right now, where it will send you to an external site where you put your password, which will be more secure. It will be out of the hands of Telegram. So, you know, if the CEO of Telegram wants to hack the bot or whatever, like look at through the history, they still will not have access to it. So we're trying to make it as secure as possible uh, so that everybody could feel comfortable using it. Uh, these are the two features. The, Secure create and secure restore. Those are the things that we are working on, because uh, I will need to send you to an external website to in order to access it. Uh, what we hope to do with this bot is, uh, uh, like, to we want to make it very easy for like bots and uh, for Ethiopians to easily able to send the Cardano or exchange the Cardano. Or if somebody is sending you ADA, for example, you need to be able to convert it to local currency easily, uh, which is a feature that we don't have. There's projects that are running in Ethiopia that want to receive funds in ADA but not have means to exchange it. And also right now, once we're done with this, we hope to, uh, we hope to expand it to other African countries depending on the needs that they have. It will be open source and it will be uh, openly available, the code. Uh, and maybe they can, we can build a community so that they can develop it themselves and exchange it forever, modify it to whatever needs of their community are. Uh, that was the presentation in short. Uh, so I'm looking for feedback from the community if there's any improvements or ideas or concerns that you had. Uh, one quick yeah. question on that. So um, yeah. I know I've, I've worked with um, and built bots for um, various um, components, you know, back a couple years ago. Um, but are there any concerns on whenever Telegram does updates and changes uh, with the bot itself? Uh, are you guys going to be able to keep up with the changes that they constantly make? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, that is actually a good concern. Uh, we're I mean, most of the, our fear is uh, usually for most of this activities, we're using the APIs. We were running it on local nodes at first, but uh, Gimbal Labs has, uh, they've already prepared the necessary API access to create the wallets. And for other 
So we are more concerned on those updates. With the right. Telegram, most of the uh, the bot we use the basic bot features, which haven't changed for a while now. So we don't expect them to regularly change a lot. But uh, if there's any updates, of course, we would be uh, we would be updating the bot itself. We would have to. Uh, but since this is an you know a non-custodial wallet, so uh, no matter what, people would still be able to access their ADA in right. the end. Uh, no, no, that was my only concern. But yeah, no, it looks good. Great work. Yeah. yeah um, you guys already funded, right? And this is like pretty much like a community update. Just yes, we were funded in Fund Seven, the last one uh, for this bot, and we are hoping to finish it by the end of this month, at least the test run, and then uh, try to see if. Uh, I mean, we have a lot of interest here within Ethiopia, but I wanted to see what the interest were in the rest of the African community, if. Uh, if they would be interested to use it and modify it however they need, so that if that's an actual thing. But we want to do more with this kind of uh, in this theme, where maybe like next would be like WhatsApp, where a person can see the their balance or anything within the WhatsApp Messenger, so they don't have to do the comp. So we're trying to just simplify the process with the applications that people already have, instead of going through, you know that other processes because most of the people are new to it and they need it to be quite simple. At the same time, it has to be secure. So we're trying to balance the two to make it as uh, simple as to use at the same time also secure. Uh, that's what we're working on. So like maybe on WhatsApp, you just check your, just send a message to this bot and it will tell you your balance or maybe it would even allow you to send. We haven't worked on WhatsApp bots before, so we're trying to see if that's a possibility, but you should be able to check your balance or see if you received anything immediately within WhatsApp. So, because everybody uses messengers, if they have WhatsApp, even like, I don't know, in most African countries, even WhatsApp is free to use. So, uh, I mean, uh, free as in, it doesn't even take your data balance when you're using it. So people are, are easily available on WhatsApp, for example. Yeah. Um, why did you guys decide to build it on Telegram? Just curious. Uh, well, here in Ethiopia, actually, Telegram is very big. Everybody uses Telegram in Ethiopia. It's uh, very famous. Uh, uh, like people use the like our banks have uh, APIs for payments within Telegram. People there's marketplaces people use. Everybody's in a group on Telegram. Gotcha. It's like yeah, WeChat, I think Ethiopia WeChat. is the biggest in Africa. Yeah, but like uh, this is like a unique case in Ethiopia. I don't know how it came to be, but suddenly everybody's using Telegram. This is up about some four or five years, like two, three years since it's been, and it just took off. I don't like, the rest of African countries, yep. the majority just prefer WhatsApp. It's much easier, but for some reason, everybody here is using Telegram. So that's why we started with Telegram. It's also easier to develop bots on Telegram. <laughs> so we were lucky on that part. <laughs> awesome. Uh, congrats. I, I think uh, Afia, um, you know, she's uh, she's been uh, Afia. Actually, are you part of the uh, the African African Town Hall? If you are here, and if you are, you if you're talking, you're muted. <laughs> yeah, Google Meet is a little bit different from Zoom. Zoom is where everything happens, but uh, I wanted to make sure that. You know, we don't have the 40-minute limit. Um, uh, if if it's true, right, that people can't just go and buy Cardano, just like I'm in the U.S., we can just go on, you know, crypto exchange and just buy it. Um, then I see a huge potential benefit for that. You know, um, and also if it's true that in Ethiopia, everyone's on Telegram, just like in China, everybody uses WeChat for everything financial. Right, they almost use it like their ID. <laughs> right, uh, then this is going to be very, very, very powerful. Um, do you know? Do you know if like different African countries also use Telegram, or is it mostly Ethiopia? Maybe. Uh, the recent uh, there was a some data release from Telegram a few years back where they had a this infographic of people using uh, Telegram. Ethiopia was like more of an exception within uh, Africa. 
so there wasn't a lot of people using it. I mean, in the rest of Africa. But mm. our hope is to use other, like what to move to WhatsApp bots as well. Maybe that's a possibility, but we haven't worked on those before. So we're trying to figure out if that's a possibility. But yeah. like, the idea is like to make payment. As you said, though, the part where it's not possible to buy here, that would be the first thing that we're doing, uh, allowing it. But even that is actually quite complicated So because we will have to provide the liquidity for it, which is not something easy to do. Uh, so we can at least start with peer-to-peer. Uh, so easily people can easily buy but that option currently at least for Ethiopia exists within Binance you can buy peer-to-peer on Binance there's no direct other methods but I've been talking with other African countries where that even that is not a possibility like I don't know Madagascar or Congo where they cannot they don't even have the peer-to-peer access so um, we're trying to open like uh, opportunities for them to use as well awesome Anyone else has a question? Want to be you? Sorry, I was on mute. I couldn't Hello. unmute myself. Yes, I was able to unmute Hello. Yeah, what was the question again? <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, I yeah, think, I had. Yeah, I, was, yeah, I think Nabiu had a question on uh, do you think that Telegram or WhatsApp based, um, you know, a uh, uh, bot that can help you buy uh, Cardano and ADA directly, right? Instead of uh, going through a peer, uh, would that be would that be um, uh, would that be desirable across Africa? Telegram. I don't know how it's going to work, but then yeah, because a lot of people have Telegram. All like what's happening now, I have to go through Binance, you go through, through a whole lot of systems before you can get your aid. If it can be done on Telegram, I think that would be good. Uh, hello, I feel, um, sorry, can I ask where you're from? I'm from Ghana, West Africa. Hello, how far? <laughs> I had a Ghanaian roommate. <laughs> uh, <laughs> At my... <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I uh, wanted to ask, is it like, how do you guys, uh, like, is the only option to buy crypto within Binance only currently or are there other means? Yeah, currently only through Binance. On peer-to-peer or is that like you can buy with your bank directly with your cards? No, 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 peer-to-peer. Like Banks are only illegal currently, yeah. Currently, it's oh. illegal to deal with a bank, so it's peer-to-peer sort of uh, things going on now with the crypto world. We are trying to okay. educate people more to see whether it can be accepted. Nah. But We're in the same situation here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The same situation also in Tunisia, in North Africa. Uh, they can use only peer-to-peer. Uh, through Binance, but uh, people are mostly on WhatsApp more than Telegram. Um, yeah. I the how is how is the Telegram or WhatsApp going to work in dealing with? Or is just like a group comes together, and then so they go through the PS because I don't, or they go through Binance because I don't see how Telegram can work. Maybe you want to do a quick demo. Uh, yeah, I can do a quick demo again. Uh, Afia, can you see? Can you see my screen now? Yeah, I can see your screen. Okay, so I'm just gonna do the demonstration again. So this is uh, sorry, this is the bot again. Uh, like uh, I can click on menu on the bot directly, and I can see or recognize me. I can see my balance, for example. This is running on the test net. So I can see my balance okay. or okay. I can uh, send receive and I can get my receiving address. So somebody can send to me or I can send directly to their, I can send to their Cardano address or to their Telegram username. So I can send directly to any Telegram user that uses the bot. Uh, okay. And the feature we are working on right now is the payment method or the buying method, the buying slash selling, which will be 
where we here in Ethiopia use Telebur for mobile money. So we are trying to integrate it with Telebur uh, okay. for the payment option to buy Cardano. So this part, okay. we will modify it for different African countries based on their reality. Uh, I don't know, maybe in Ghana, yeah. you use Momo or something. So you just modify it to change that so that people can directly buy with that. Okay. It's, it's really interesting. I think it's, it's, it's something that we all should look at because it makes life simpler. Right now, yeah, what's happening I'm, is I'm because it's just... That. Right now, what's happening is just because, because it's peer-to-peer -peer on buying... If you don't have... We are, if you are not dealing directly with it, it means you have to go through somebody who has a Binance platform to do it for you. But if such a group is set up, you can easily see your transactions. You can easily do your transactions yourself. So I think it would be a good idea to get that as a price. Actually, um, WADA was also thinking about something, and they did a proposal, WADA Dex, to actually uh, set up something like Momo, as we were talking about, um, the mobile money platforms. So actually, I'm not too deep into that, so I can't explain much. But the, the proposal is on ideal scale. And hopefully, if it is um, funded, it's something they are trying to pilot across Africa so that it will be easy for people to actually do it. So hopefully, if that proposal is, is also... I don't know yours. I've not seen yours. I don't know whether you can put a link. Is it a proposal or it's already been done? Is it a proposal you're, that you're you're muted, you are suggesting? Sorry. Sorry. Uh, it was funded in Fund 7, the previous one. Uh, we're almost oh, okay. done with it, but we hope to we hope to expand to different African countries on the application for Fund 9, not Fund 8, but, you know, the next one. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't, That's I don't, interesting. I don't think you need to limit yourself to just African countries. I think it's good to have a focus, but, like, you know, like... Uh, uh, people in even Vietnam, right? They could use it, right? Because they don't. It's it's buying crypto, buying Cardano. It's more about education, and you have the ease of use, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's about hey, this exists, and you can get it, and you can buy it easily, and you can send money to your family, whatever. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, that's what we hope to do. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Nebiu. Okay. Thank you, Avia. Anybody else has a question or comment for Nebiu? Obviously, we'd, we uh, want to move forward and let other people uh, chat and share their yeah. proposals, yeah. right? Yeah, but uh, can, we get a link to your, uh, can we get a link to your work to see to, to study it more? Yeah, you can put it in, uh, your, can I in can... the chat. Yeah, I'll leave it in the chat. Okay, thank you. Awesome. Cool, cool, cool. All right, who wants to go next? Who has a proposal? Uh, I just to want share? to ask, like, oh, go ahead. Yes. I just want to ask, like, does does the solution like, uh, I joined like maybe I missed the point, but uh, does it offer like inter exchange between cryptos, like? Or like, are you in the future plan to implement that? Interaction, Interaction is it between for what? me or? Yeah, I think it's for you. Interaction between different, yeah, different crypto wallets like exchange. Uh, like, is the question for me? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah I mean, like uh, the bot you showed. Like, are you plan to like? Uh, is it implemented or or? You, you guys are like planning to implement the feature like uh, to yeah, move, we're, uh, exchange the different wallet. Uh, yeah, we've actually thought about uh, access to at least with at least with Bitcoin. So because Bitcoin is famous, you know, people want to buy Bitcoin as well, as well as ADA. We were thinking of using that, but that's uh, uh, it is a possibility to do, but it's a very small men, uh, menu that you have access on Telegram. So 
uh, you cannot fill it up with the, we had to reduce a lot of features that we want to do, but it's possible to integrate it with the other DEXs so that you can uh, exchange it on existing uh, exchanges that happen, or maybe, I don't know, maybe we work with Sunday Swap or something. So people can use that method to exchange currencies, but we haven't started working on those uh, and it's not in the near future yet. Yeah. Cool. Oh. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Uh, Abdel Karim, Afia, do you guys have a proposal in Fund 8? Nathaniel? No, personally, I don't have any proposal, but I have my friends. I have a proposal in uh, Fund 8. Okay. It's, uh, awesome. Big chain. big chain is for uh, fleet management and car sharing. And a team is a whole team, African team from Tunisia. They are based in Germany, but they are all Tunisian. And they are in fund uh, eight. So it's an opportunity to advertise them and uh, let the people know if they can help. Yeah, I have. Um, it's a great three pro oh, Okay, go on. No, no, go, go oh. on. Go I have three proposals. The Catalyst School, but it was proposed. Hey, the, Cat the African Catalyst School was proposed with SWAM, so currently they are hosting it. Then the Catalyst School, also for Africa, they are all in Grow Africa. Then I have another one, um, Cardano Information Center, that is in Scale Up Cardano Hubs. Um, currently, we are running from an office and we have um, an empty office space. What I plan doing with the Cardano Information Center to finish the office space with information on the blockchain technology, specifically on Cardano, and then translate it into the various languages that the Africa continent open it up as a, a working space where people can just come in to learn of, um, to have more knowledge on blockchain and Cardano especially. So break down, do leaflets, breaking down all the blockchain jargons into simpler messages for people to understand what blockchain is about and how to deal with blockchain and all those things. So that is that is the aim of the of the proposal. It's in scale up Cardano hubs. So please look at it and vote up for me. <laughs> Any awesome. questions? Um, Afia, could you share your links to your proposals in the chat here? Okay, I will. I will. Yeah. So anybody who wants to support more education and Cardano in Africa, uh, highly encourage you go and vote and read Afia's proposals. Um, I have a question. Is there, is it for all of Africa or is it specifically for uh, some countries? Oh, the idea is to translate um, the all the languages that we are hosting on Africa Town Hall, to translate them into French. If we can get an Arabic translator, that will be fine. Um, a Swahili translator. So it's open to, and it's going to be an, a virtual thing, a virtual room where we can host meetings as well. So it's not open to just uh, we here in Ghana, my country, it's open to all over Africa, as well as even extra, the diaspora, if people are interested. Because we are going to host uh, programs and meetings online. So if it's online, yeah, people can just hop in and then be part of it. So it's not just open to us alone. Awesome. I'm just finding your your links here. 
this is for the Catalyst. Oh, that's right. This is the Information Center. Um, how much are you guys asking for across uh, for each proposal, Afia? The Information Center is about sixteen thousand um, dollars because the idea is to get certain things that can also bring money to the center so that it can be self-sustaining. So we are getting um, cameras that we can hire out for filming and all those things. So we are trying to put things in the center that can be self-sustaining. And then the African Town Hall is $10,000. And then the Catalyst School is the same. And mostly, most of the funds are going into uh, translation of materials from blockchain technology. Awesome. I know uh, language is a huge blocker to participation, uh, not just collaboration, right? Uh, I, I am very grateful that the uh, African Town Hall is in uh, is in English and other languages as well that I can participate. So thank you. I'm excited for your proposals. Good luck, Afia, for me. Thank okay. you. Thank anyone, you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, anyone here has a question for Afia for any of these three? I don't have a question for Alfia, but I do for, is it Abdel Karim? Uh, if you're talking, you're on mute. Yes, sir. Ah, um, so you said they're doing um, blockchain for cars and freight. Fleet, right? fleet management cars and uh, car sharing. Okay. Uh, the, the the project is a big chain. You can find it there. Okay. Now, are they, they trying? To, uh, so, is it just the sharing aspect of it, or is it the management of the fleet aspect of it? The, the, there is two proposals. One is the management of the fleet, and can for car car sharing or enterprises <laughs> or uh, any kind of uh, project like that. Or oh, and the second is uh, for. Uh, uh, connected cars and uh, yeah they have uh, already developed a, a hardware device inside the car they work with Volkswagen in Germany for that and it's a great project so it would be nice to take a look at it do, do you have a link yeah I'll put you a link uh, just a second Sorry, I, I'm uh, I'm not an organizer of uh, Africa Town Hall or anything. They have all the links, all the presentations. We're just doing it impromptu one, uh, offering uh, space for the community to join, talk about their proposals. We, okay. I, I am recording this, so we'll post it on the uh, Catalyst form. Okay. Uh, I can share the link. Come on. Okay. Um, while we do that, um, Nathaniel, <laughs> do you have a proposal in, in Fund 8? That you like to talk about? <clears throat> oh, um, hi everyone. How hi. are you? Good. Um, let me see if, if you can see. Me. Yeah. Um, yeah, I do have actually like uh, on fund eight. I 
I have three proposals actually, and maybe I can say some highlights about three of them. Okay, um, and the, the first one is actually uh, an academy, so I called it like uh, a CA for like an academy certification program only for community advisors. So it's under the community advisors uh, improvement challenge. And the aim of this project is actually <laughs> to provide a necessary um, steps, or I don't know. Uh, it's just to make sure that the community advisors have enough understanding of the, the, the values or even like the measurement that, um, that we usually use when we, uh, you know, go through proposals, give reviews and everything like that. So we have to make sure the, the, the community advisors have enough understanding about this. So the, the proposal aims to give solution for this and in, in a way of like certifying our community advisors. So the certification is only just making sure that they go through some of the steps. For example, it, it could be a, the guide and we can change the guide into a proper structured Oops, we may have lost him. I'm sure he'll come back. Hey, you came back. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So yeah, yeah. So that that's that's what uh, the community advisor academy certification does. So whenever a community advisor wants to be wants to pro wants to go through a proposal and just give out their uh, ideas and like serve as community advisor, they have to go through this process and it's going to be a portal it's going to be uh yeah they go through they just enroll and at the end of the course we're just going to give them a certification with that certification they will be able to go and give out assessments for the proposal so that's one of the proposal that i actually submitted and the other one is just a, a cardano university seminar so here in our university so it's one of the projects uh we used to organize seminars like uh it's just a one day event and also like uh we like students come to the, the, the to the event it's a seminar they go they they we have a bunch of agenda they they like uh something related with blockchain cardano specifically and yeah so but this is aiming to actually have it uh blockchain as part of the curriculum so it's actually done with a partnership with some universities. So uh, I have managed to communicate with some university department heads, deans, and they were actually interested to have blockchain as part of their curriculum, especially for the tech departments. So here, some universities have like uh, twice a year or three times a year, they organize a workshop. So the workshop is aiming to have something different from the curriculum, like something like a new technology could be about AI, about machine learning, something, but that's not part of the curriculum. So I happened to co communicate with them and they were interested to have blockchain as part of the curriculum, but they don't have the right equipment and they don't have the right process to actually adapt it. So this is a process, this is project aims to create that bridge between the universities here and blockchain, Cardano and everything from the ecosystem. So yeah, this is another project that I proposed. And the third and the last one is just a uh, it's under the Film and Media Creatives Unite. It's it's interesting. So this one is more of a creative direction, and it's it's about it's Cardano's footprint in Ethiopia. So which means here we're doing one of the influential projects here for us, especially for Ethiopia. We we're working to register five million or four thousand. I don't know. So we this is the. The project that Cardano is working with the government here, but uh, the the aim is actually to develop uh, documentaries. So I happen to have a, a small group that we do documentaries, videos, any interesting like creative, interesting um, contents, and we 
happen to move around different countries in the in the country because I organize mm -hmm. a hiking and we go see out how the the yeah. countryside goes and um, how their education system is. So Cardano is actually working with the government to actually uh, improve something or to add a value in our education journey in everyone's education journey. That's something ha that has to be recorded. So we speak that influential project. It's changing lives. It's changing to the way that everyone goes through, especially when it's related to education. But we're not showcasing that enough because, you know, sometimes if you if you want to understand about the solution really well, you need to know what the problem is first and understand the problem first. So this a documentary or this project aims to actually showcase how the problem is in Ethiopia and what it's trying to solve, what Cardano is trying to solve. So the project solely aims to come up, like create short documentaries that's focusing on students' journey. So let's say a child, when they're ready to go through the university, to just the school, what's their journey look like? So we just create a small documentaries in, in different sectors or in different states of uh, a person or an individual in Ethiopia. So it's just showcasing their uh, education journey. So we can showcase that and we can actually keep that as a documentary. Yeah, so that's that's the final proposal, yeah. And I'll send the links, yeah. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for joining and thanks for sharing. It's super amazing concepts, right? Afia, if you're gonna say something. Yeah, I was going to say that I like his, his idea of trying to see whether we can get something best out of community advices. Because it looks like currently there's a whole lot of mess going on there. So if um, that place can be straightened out, it could be a nice thing. So thumbs up for the proposal and I wish you all the best of luck. We'll look at, the, we'll look at it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we'll look at the links. Um, uh, I was really interested in like the journey of a student, not just in the film, but also where you guys are able to talk to deans and heads of schools and re really get schools signed up and offer a blockchain, uh, you know, partnership, especially for the tech. Uh, I, personally, Nathaniel, I'd love to connect with you on that. I know, um, you know, we ourselves at Stamp Brilliant, we partner with like Yoma Foundation, EBU, and then Carter Chef. I'm looking to partner with MADA and all the organizations, actually, that are doing the work of connecting students. So, uh, you know, uh, we'll pitch our stuff a little bit later. You'll get to know what we do. But uh, I think it's extremely important right during the formation years when you're young and you're in school and you're learning right to get excited about technology to get excited about blockchain and not only to get excited but also to connect with um you know real life changing opportunities right like ca certification um for example it's something that the community needs um and the people on the ground need so yeah, anyone else? Any comments? Any questions? Uh, yeah, so um, I really like all three of your proposals uh, that you presented. Um, solid. Uh, my one question I did have, though, was on the last proposal, uh, which is the document uh, to the documentary <laughs> series. Um, so what is your thoughts on how you guys are going to get that out? Your distribution stuff like are you guys planning on just hosting a website and having it all there or are you pushing it through different venues or um are you going to try and make it you know into some kind of special somewhere um so i didn't know if you guys have thought that far ahead yet as far as what your distribution is going to be like because i for one would love to see it uh when you get whenever you guys get it done um yeah so the distribution was actually to one is to actually store because it's a story and we want to tell to the world so we wanted to keep it and at least like 
here soon. The IOHQ SQ is going to be here also for Africa, of course. And we are going to uh, give them as well because it's part of the story. And the other way is actually we're trying uh, the idea was to host it on YouTube on all of the social media platforms because we want to say like the we want to go with the footprint uh, as a brand like Cardano's footprint and we're going the plan is to showcase that like promote it out there give it to the to the circle it's also including the Cardano circle to throughout the community among the community and everyone because it's part of a story for us Ethiopians in Ethiopia and also the Cardano community as well as a technology because they're trying they're actually making a difference so we want to show the that so yeah uh, we haven't thought about hosting it on a, on on a website actually it was just directly going to host it on social media platforms but uh, that's actually a good point as well to host it on a on a website that would be really good awesome yeah no and like i said um i for one yeah all looking forward to to being able to see that one of these days Great, thank you. Awesome. Anyone else? Okay, so let's see. Um, anyone else has a proposal uh, besides us? <laughs> okay, so. Um, do you have a proposal yourself? Yes, I do. No. Yes, yes, I do. But, uh, so we talked about it earlier on, before I got on. Oh, yeah. Have you already spoken to it? Afia, I'm sorry, you you cut off. Could you repeat that? I said, have you already discussed it before I got on board? Uh, no, not yet. Not yet. We. Uh, um, I want to make sure everyone you know, is oh, able okay. to share, okay. um, and then, you know, uh, we we were ready, I'm sure everyone was ready for the uh, African Town Hall, super excited for the Idea Fest there, we were too, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. and, you know, I'm glad that we're able to do it, it's going to happen next Friday for sure, right, right, on the 29th, yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes. in two weeks, okay, awesome, so I want to, I'm going to share my screen and go through our proposals. Uh, by the way, guys, if you want to share like your contact information, how people can reach out to you beyond the idea skill, please feel free to also put it in the, in the chat. I'm going to share quickly my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. And thanks for joining uh, this one. Um, so, you know, my name is Nin, and I'm your fellow Cardano Catalyst member. We have two proposals in, um, in Catalyst in Fund 8. Uh, the first one is open source quadratic voting and funding, and then the second one is mentor, mentee, bounties, and e-learning. Um, you know, two years ago, I was able to help put almost a million people, 937,000 people in jobs at uh, Fortune 100 companies, right? Google, Facebook, Amazon, and so on. So I was already very blessed to be able to partner with the hiring and recruiting community industry uh, to do this feat in 2020 when people were laying off because COVID started and everything, right? Uh, but when I looked into the data, I only saw less than 13% being diverse, being underrepresented, being self-taught developers. And that's why we decided, I decided to start a new company and, and build a new uh, pioneer, new path to equal opportunities for everyone. You see the problem, uh, there's multiple different problems, but one is that you know, even on Cardano, the developer ecosystem, we need, we need more developers, right, to build on blockchain. 
uh, and it's not not just on Cardano. It's any company. They're always hiring software engineers, right? Uh, but the hiring system is broken because companies inherently don't trust people's resumes. Right? Every, anyone edits their resume, and that's why you have this whole long hiring process. If you're in engineering, a lot of times if you're new or junior, they need they I will ask you to pass a coding test. Uh, from data, I know that coding tests are tend to be quite biased for people who are underrepresented in tech. Now, on the other side, you have you know open source projects, right? That suffer from the tragedy of commons, and that's essentially means it's underfunded, it's over consumed, overused, and people are burning out. Senior developers, open source developers are burning out because they're not getting paid. Everyone benefits from it. Uh, everyone is asking for more features, bug fixes, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but it's not their full-time job, right? They may just do it as a hobby, most open source developers. This combined with a, a bigger micro trend of just people quitting their job globally. Right. 375 million people will quit their jobs with T-Now in the next couple of years. People are burning out. They want to do something else. The current system obviously is not working. And so, um, you know, across the two proposals, uh, we believe that if, you know, for the open source quadratic voting and funding, we're modeling it after Gitcoin, which is built, which is the open source quadratic voting and funding on um, on Ethereum, right? If they're, if if they're, uh, if they can do it, Cardano should be able to do it as well, and even better. Our mission is to get more funding towards the open source ecosystem to incentivize people. So, uh, in the next couple of years, you know, these are large numbers. We aim to land, you know, we aim for Mars, land on Moon, right? What part of this is to use this funding to create opportunities for self-taught developers and engineers that contribute to the open source ecosystem. And if we execute well and do it right, we, with your help, we can, we can get there very soon. So what we're building, uh, we're building a platform, quadratic fund matching platform that, that essentially is designed to fund open source bounties, workshops, and hackathons, right? Uh, that can pay developers that have been currently contributing to to the project. So Nebu, right, you have an open source project. And if you guys need more funding for your project, uh, right, you can get it here. And if your users love your project, for example, Right, they can donate one dollar, two dollars, whatever it is, one ADA, two ADA, right? But because of the quadratic fund matching, we hope to partner with Benevolent Wells on Cardano, in and out of Cardano. Actually, there's a lot of institutional and open source foundations out there, such as one of them is Cardano Foundation, Mozilla Foundation, so many, right? That already spend million, hundreds of millions of dollars every year, right, to sponsor. Uh, so, with this fund matching, your one ADA can become five ADA and ten ADA, or even, right? And one dollar can become five dollars or even ten dollars, right? Where you know the everyday person's donation can be matched by big money, and so any open source project, as long as they produce a lot of impact and a lot of public good can raise serious funding. But not only this, right? So one one piece is is for sure, you know, driving more funding towards the open source project. That's one proposal that we have there. The other proposal is focused more on, you know, uh, while incentivizing the mentors that the the expert contributors that already are building your project. So maybe you're your expert contributor, you demo your 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 stuff, right? But what if there is a newcomer, right? What if Nathaniel 
ha has somebody at, in some school, right, and who wants to learn Hasco Plutus and Marlowe and contribute to your project. They won't be able to do it by themselves. But at the same time, I know you also need help to build this because every developer needs help, right, to build something, to make it faster. Um, and so for them, this is for the junior developers, newcomers, and new contributors. This is a great opportunity to get real hands-on experience, right, building something real. Uh, as we all know, like talent is pretty universal, right, but opportunities are not. And in this way, I want to create opportunities for everyone uh, to get to get experience in order to get more experience, right? Why would you do this, maybe you, beyond getting paid or completing the open source bounties? Is now you're not only known for completing big projects as a as yourself, but also to know to be known to lead teams to complete bigger projects. We write this in an on-chain practical resume that's open source as well, that's secure in a trusted uh, proof of reputation is wrapped into SSI. So we really want to empower people to wean off, you know, resumes and LinkedIn and so on, and just create a real proof of their reputation. Hey, I've completed this project. I joined this. I can lead teams. I can do the work so they can access more opportunities quickly and easily. Especially when it comes to developers, I know that you know for our own team uh, onboarding new people as developers, it, it takes a while to to set up the the integrated development environment, right? Um, sometimes even week. I know from Plutus Pioneer Program, some of our engineers that went through it, they took, you know, just three days downloading the the Cardano blockchain, <laughs> right? Um, it, and that's a huge blocker to collaboration, right? So we want to build a a powerful workstation in the cloud to accelerate this collaboration, improve uh, developer productivity, and enable people in Africa they can buy like a super powerful computer to have one in the cloud. As long as they can have access to internet, they'll be able to work and collaborate and build their skill sets. You know, in terms of the quadratic uh, funding, right? Um, Gitcoin, which we're modeling by, uh, they have raised about $58 million for open source funding alone, right? Uh, we plan to, you know, and I talk to a lot of our partners like Yuma Foundation and so on. They do like, uh, they do like, um, I think they're in Ethiopia, they're in Nigeria, they're in South Africa, uh, and they focus on project-based learning, experiential learning for people after they graduate, right, students, for youth pretty much, uh, to, to teach them skills, uh, where we can bring in the funding and the opportunities uh, and, and dedicate a portion of this towards uh, projects in Africa, right? And that will create opportunities for, for everyone here, for you know, all your students, even your projects. Let's say, Afia, I don't know if you're an engineer, but if you have a technical product, right, you can get funding, post a bounty, and find engineers in Ghana to to work with you, right? Right now, not, not really, but we were looking at it in the subsequent funding. Awesome. There you go. So you get funding, whether from Catalyst or from us, whether we match in give you more, right? Uh, then you can also find people who can do the work and implement it. Okay. Yeah, so it looks for, good. Awesome. So for us, right, uh, we have done the mentor-mentee program ourselves. Um, over the past four months, we've helped 46 people get jobs that came to us not knowing front end from back end, right? Uh, mentees that just wanted to break into tech. 90% uh, of them are 
are uh, new, completely new to tech. Uh, and while others, you know, talk about diversity, equity, inclusion, especially here, right? We just do it because we don't have a limit of where you are or how you're born or what color of your skin and so on, right? It's based on, it's based on skill. Here's my team. I have a great team. James is here. He leads the IDE team. Uh, Beatrice, uh, very blessed to have her. She has a lot of experience with nonprofits. Frank, uh, Frank is a wizard in blockchain, uh, in Haskell, Plutus, and so on. We have a team of eight blockchain engineers that have experience in Haskell, Plutus, uh, and about 20 20 uh, uh, soft full stack engineers, William in uh, MongoDB, React, Node.js, and so on. Of course, myself, right? I've led other companies before. And also, you know, we're building this with the community in mind, for sure. Uh, you may have seen some of these guys around, Nori and Kenrick. Uh, they you know, are deeply, deeply involved with the community. Uh, we just got accepted into the Atala Prism PAP or PSG program, right? Where they're gonna help us make sure that the, that whatever we build on the, with the on-chain practical resume, the proof of reputation is kosher with privacy in mind. Uh, the, the governance framework, the trust registry is all there. And also partnering with New IOG, other IOG teams like DCF, right, Decentral, uh, a decentralized consortium fund, to fund more open source projects, right. Cardano is open source, um, right. So even IOG can use this to build build more. And of course, um, you know, Yoma Foundation very active in Africa, EBU. Uh, they're doing Latin America, Europe, and Africa, right? Uh, and other other uh, self-sovereign identity and Atala Prison partners to help us accelerate the delivery timeline, like Proof Space, like Roots Wallet ID, like Learner Shape, and so on. Okay, would you guys like to see a demo? Yeah. Okay. Yes, please. Awesome. So let's see. I want to see. So this is our quick demo. Can you guys see my screen? Actually. Yep. It's loading. <laughs> it is loading. Okay, let me share this first. So this is the, the funding portion, right? The quadratic funding, the way it works is uh, you and I would donate a, a dollar or two, however much, right? And then after donating, uh, then we would pull more money from the matching pool from big sponsors, right, to give you more. So over here, you just go to grants, you check out what, what you want to, what projects there are, so similar to like, uh, catalyst, you know, pick up projects, or you create project and then you list it there, and then people can donate, right? And then you drive people, hey, donate, so that I can get more funding for my project. Just add it to cart. You check out your cart. Okay, let me zoom in. Can I zoom in? Oh no. Add it to cart. Check out to cart. You select the wallet that you want to use, right? Whether it's five. Ada, whatever, and then you, you select the amount that you want to do, and then you, you simply check out. Okay. Okay. Now, that's the, uh, that's, the, uh, that's the one that we have for the quadratic one in funding. This is for the mentor mentees, okay, creating bounties, and so on. So just for the context, this is for the, the, this is the business management console that let's say maybe you, you have open source project, you just got a bunch of funding, right? But you need help 
from developers to, to build something. Okay. Then you would go here, you'd sign up. We have you know, password, let's sign up. Uh, we're also adding um, an SSI login using, uh, using the proof space partner. Okay. Sign up, add your team members to help you manage the bounty, right? Uh, by their name, email, and then check to create a bounty. Okay. Put in your GitHub or, or Bitbucket repository to your open source project. Hit next, we would we would call a GitHub API or Bitbucket or GitLab API to pull the repo information, right? Uh, check all the languages. You can fill in the t task description, like, hey, I need to, uh, I need to integrate with the Yoroi wallet or with the Nami wallet, or whatever, right? Uh, task, and then for submission requirement, you would say, hey, you know, the everything has to be well documented and commented out. Acceptance criteria has to pass all my tests. Otherwise, I cannot accept your pull request. And then important links. Check out our our company, we are actually hiring, vote for our grant, whatever you want to include. Okay. And they estimate this is going to take 20 to 40 hours or however long it would take you. And then we would recommend you how much you should pay. Right. There will be a sliding scale. If you pay less, you'll have, you know, maybe less interest, interest from different regions. If you pay more, it's going to get done faster, pretty much. And then any officers that you want to talk about, right? Get, get in touch with people and discuss. And then if you have people that you already want to invite to collaborate with you on this, you can invite them by either like an email list or personally by email or GitHub or LinkedIn or whatever. After sending in an email, then you'll be able to send out an email using a SendGrid server. Afterwards, you'll be in a uh, dashboard, right? You'll see all the different projects that are going on, check out your bounties, right? And see how many commits, how many pull requests, all the diversity, right? Because one of the goals of our platform is to drive diversity, equity, and inclusion, right? So you can see, okay, these are the people that work here on the project. If there is any potential for bias. You can edit all the information that you put in. You can also check out the more graphs, any discussion that you may have, or you can post, hey, guys, um, I don't know, uh, Nami or Yoroi has updated the SDK something, right? Or these, these are the commands that you need to get started, right? Or this is the demo environment, right? Or watch this demo, or whatever. And people can ask. People can ask, hey, uh, this is awesome. I love this, or I'm still confused. Blah blah blah. You can also say, hey, you know, check out all the different users and and see how much time they spent, all the branches, all the pull requests, and launch ID from here, so you can see the code, see if they're coding at this, at this time or not. Okay. Here is our IDE. Okay, the collaborative IDE. Right now, uh, I have the team working on the Atala Prison Pioneer program. Right. Uh, I just got into the uh, I don't know what they call it. Pioneer Space Station. Right. Uh, so if you're there, we'd love to connect because we really want to focus on empowering people to build their proof of reputation. So they can unlock more opportunities, much easier. Um, uh, I'm going to show my hands. I'm not coding. Yash, do you want to, or, or James, do you, do you guys want to uh, type something in, in the terminal? And in. Okay. okay. So my hands are up. OK. <laughs> So me and Yash, we can code together. Okay. Right. It's like a collaborative platform. Right? Yeah, it's fully collaborative. So teams can go come together, and and code on your open source project. Right. 
Um, we support over 60 languages. Uh, you can see this is Kotlin and Prism, right? Uh, and uh, the um, um, uh, and we're we're adding Haskell, Plutus, and Marlow support. All right. So, all right, you can install stuff. Right. It's just live. <laughs> Has a terminal. I think it's, uh, Go ahead, uh, Josh. Yeah, did you open a new instance? Uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think you may need to uh, install the dependencies for this one. It was working before. Mm. I'm not sure. Okay, I no think problem. it's because you're in root. You know what I mean? Oh, sorry. Yep. But, uh... Yeah, but I want to uh, see, you know, whatever changes, you also have get source control here. Uh, everything, it is. So while Yash is doing that, right? Check out our, our more full demo, right? Here's a. It's like, oh yeah, it goes. But uh, please vote for the open source quadratic funding idea. Um, right? We're asking for 112 for that to drive more funding towards open source projects. Once we build that, we're probably gonna expand to more and more causes like climate, C4C, and others, right? And then the mentor and mentee bounties, um, you know, also uh, vote if you can share, if you can't share the word, we're asking for 90K there. Please help us, join us on Discord, right? I, I really believe this can, and this will benefit the whole ecosystem, regardless of where you are, okay? Any questions? Uh, I'm sorry if I missed something. Are those uh, two on the same platform, the mentor mentee and the the bounty program, or did yes. I miss something? Yep, they they are. Um, you know, uh, we're a Snapbillia company. We have uh, we're building the whole thing, pretty much. Uh, I split them into two proposals because one is about creating opportunities, right, with funding. And the other one is actually taking the funding and using it for learning and welcoming new users into the ecosystem and, and training them, providing a, a framework where newcomers can learn from mentors. Yep. But it's all on Snapbillia. So will you be able to run the project if only like one of them was funded or something like one part of it can go on right yeah we, we, regardless of whether it get funded or not we will build this yeah I think the the question yeah I think the question if correct me if I'm wrong but you're asking does it have to be do you have to do the grant version in order to do the bounty version is that what you're asking Maybe you. I think. Uh, well, yeah. Okay. So I didn't hear the actual question. So it's like, is one dependent on the other? No. For this project to work. No. No. Uh, however, uh, people can commit when they post a post a project for funding. They can say, "Hey, hundred percent of this will go towards bounties." Awesome. Any anyone else? I'll put the links to our proposal in the chat. Um, 
I love this. It looks very interesting. Thank you. So if you can put the links in the chat and then the yeah, your contact as well. Yeah, um you know, for us it's uh beyond funding because funding is one thing, right? Beyond funding, we I'm looking for collaborators, partners, um, just like Yoma, you know, just like access to students because one thing is for them to go to school and learn the skills but then people also need access to opportunities after that after that right real practical projects to build and any any proposal actually who gets funded who needs technical help right and who's willing to open source because open source is a public good if there's more open source projects right just like for us in SSI we depend on a lot of like proof space, like learnership, like Roots ID, they're all open source projects. And we can, we don't have to build, rebuild. We can just take their stuff, customize it a little bit, integrate it into our system and deliver faster, right? So maybe if there's like WhatsApp open source bot, right? Like, okay, I already have the Web3 backend. Done. Let me just plug into yours. Boom, it's done some customization for sure needed, right? Awesome. Thank uh, you guys. I just want to say this is a really excellent project. I really like it. Thank you. Thank you, Nebby. Yeah. Uh I was about to say the same thing. It's actually really amazing. And I have one question though. Is it, um, th the first one is, is it only on Cardano ecosystem? So is it, do we want everyone to know Haskell, Plutos, and following up with that, is it how friendly is for newcomers, especially for new developers, and just knowing Haskell and yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not only for Cardano, right? Uh, because our IDE supports 60 plus languages, right? We do want to start with Cardano because the need in Cardano is huge. Like everyone has ideas, but there's not a lot of developers around, right? Um, now, that need is universal across tech, as you know. Uh, and the two uh, currencies that we're going to support is USD and Cardano first, and then we can add more and more, right? Uh, ultimately, the funding source has to be bigger than Cardano because this is a problem bigger than Cardano. Now, we are building this natively on Cardano, Haskell, Pudis, and Marlowe because, you know, fundamentally Cardano is very secure. And as a whole, uh, it's uh, not just the technology, but, but even the community and the blockchain is used to maximize impact. That's what quadratic voting is about. That's what implementing on open source is about. When you think about like, you know, 50, 50 years ago when internet started, it was also built open source, right? Nori was there when, when he was doing the dial up, uh, all of that, all of that infrastructure was open source, right? To get to one day where we have more dApps, easier, you know, interoperability uh, for anyone to be able to, hey, get funded if it's a good project, if it makes impact and get even more funding, host it if they need developers, right, and get work done. Yeah, it's, it's actually amazing because um... Like like you've mentioned, we need a lot of developers, especially in the Cardano ecosystem. Uh, 
it's it's not something easy when it comes to Plutus. I've actually I was part of the the third court, and learning Plutus is not something easy, and yep. it's not also welcoming for most developers because uh, when I joined the the third court, I was trying to come like gather some of my friends. I I study software engineering here, and I have like a lot of developer friends, I wanted them to come together and join, but it's not welcoming for, because it's a bit harder. And it's hard, yeah. Yeah, it's hard. So that was actually my question. How is it going to make, because you, I, oh, you've gotcha. mentioned Git, Git, Gitcoin as well. It's They also have something like this. And I, I have joined yeah. them a few months back and it's just, it's really amazing way of attracting developers. In yep. This way, it's easier for everyone to learn as well. Yeah, yeah, for us, it's about mentors, right? We have sixty percent success rate with our mentees, right? From nothing to something, to professional, productive engineers. So over here, right? You as a senior developer, you can do the bounty by yourself, but you may need help from others. Okay, and you are okay to you know to code together. That's that's enabled by this collaborative ID. Right? You can spin up a Google Meet or Zoom and talk whatever office hours discussion, right? But at least they can watch you and learn. You know, uh, in real time, right? And that's what we do. Like when we implemented this cloud ID internally, we saw a hundred percent success rate increase from 30 to 60 percent and as you know mentors and mentees already very successful like the Yoma Foundation their ex especially when it comes to real hands-on projects right that's what they do in and, and they just need more mentors right one of our partnership is with my last company hire easy and they provide me with programmatic access to 840 million professionals, engineers, I think maybe like 100, 100 million globally that I can invite to this platform. Yep. Yeah, amazing. So we just need yes. to build it, you know. Yeah. Um, I hope I hope to be able to close out one day and just say, hey, come, come post, come get funded. Come, come get work, come learn. Yeah. Yeah, but because it, especially with having a mentor, it would be really easy to actually follow up, like catch up. And because now if you see the cohorts, it's, it's not that much engaging because you get to learn with a lot of class. Like you, you have uh, hundreds of other developers trying to learn in the same cohort. And you get the contents with just a YouTube upload, maybe some through time to time, they organize like a QA and a and something, but it's always in a mass. And you know how that's somehow intimidating, especially for people who are right. trying to learn, but having a mentor and actually working on real projects. You can ask questions, actually, right? Exactly, exactly. You, you, you won't fear. Yeah, you, you don't have to feel any kind of, you know, you don't feel pressured, you don't feel yep. intimidated or anything because you're not asking among like uh, 10 or more than people. It's, yeah. it's actually amazing. And for, yeah. for you as a as a senior developer, right? Especially if, like say, maybe you're a senior developer, you're building your stuff, right? And let's say uh, Nathaniel's new, I don't know how new you are, just... Just let's say you knew you knew me, right? And you want to contribute, you want to learn from the master, uh, and you're willing to volunteer your time, right? Right. And then you, let's say you're a senior engineer at IOG, and you want to be engineering lead or engineering manager, and you want to prove yourself, you can lead team, right? Boom. Or you just want more people to contribute to already hard open source project because Cardano like core and Plutus core and things like that very hardcore projects right so it, it gets from people to go in green and then go to master because you get level different levels of mentors 
it's a double-sided incentive. People want to join, learn, make money. Mentors want to learn, get help, build reputation. And more reputation you get, you get better, you know, mentors, the bounties, right? They, bigger, better bounties, you can form teams, right? Collaborate together. Um, yeah, we are, well, we're going to have a after town hall breakout room in the main town hall. Next week, we're going to talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion, right? A lot of people don't believe we're able to do this, right? Because it's a big project, but we also have a big team. Um, so we're going to talk about more the detailed technical plan uh, after the town hall, after the diversity, equity, inclusion, maybe even parts of it. So you all invited. It's happening next Wednesday. Uh, town hall usually open at 11 a.m. Pacific, which is uh, 8 p.m. Uh, Central uh, Africa time. So same same time, Africa town hall like next uh, next Wednesday. We'd love to see you there. We'd love to get your perspective and dive deeper into the tech. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Afia, you want to close us out? Hey, thank you all for this amazing time. I don't think it's a wasted time at all. And um, I hope, I believe we are all on the platform. And we have our contacts also here if we need to contact each other yep. so that we can collaborate more. We can collaborate more and then um, push our business forward. Thank you. And I wish you all the best of luck in everybody's proposal. Have a happy Easter. Continue with your holidays. Happy Good Friday. Take care. Yeah, you guys. Take care. Bye. Thank you.